started recording, but it's okay because I can edit out stuff. Avoid legal snags by telling people they're being recorded. You are being recorded. I'm being recorded. Yes. Just All right. It's up. <laughs> Duly right. noted. Okay, cool. Uh, ready? I'm going to yes. get started. All right. Yep, uh, in it. three, two, one, and hello, his dark materialists. This is Travis. Typically, you would have Alaric in this spot introing the show and all those fun things. He's not here, however. He decided that he's going to go off with his family to like Disney World or someplace, <laughs> leaving Joanna and I here to host the show. So, hello for me and turning it over to Joanna. How are you? It's so great to be back. It was yes. weird. Yeah, it was so weird not um not being on yes. like on last Monday. Um I mean, you know, granted I was celebrating my 19th wedding anniversary, so that was <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. But uh now I still feel like we're like a three-legged pony. No, we were already a three-legged pony. Two-legged pony. That would be even weirder. No. We're like a two-legged stool. Stool, yes. yes. We're like a two-legged stool, and it's kind of, I'm not, I'm still uh, acclimating. Yeah, yeah. Last week it was super weird. Like Alaric and I should not be allowed to do this <laughs> without you. I mean, it was an all right show, but it could be so much better. And now was, it is. Actually, it's not because now it's Alaric better, not. but it's not the same kind of better. It's so we we better. need to all be on the same show. It is. I, it's, 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 you get used to that, right? You do. But, and, and the thing is like, it's me is the, uh, I am the constant between each week and that's not fair to anybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't get your opinion on last week's show. So what did you think? Oh my goodness gracious. Um, that was so, that was so long ago. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm all about this show. Right. Um, like right now, this show, uh, I'm trying to remember what happened last week. I'm, I'm a terrible person. I can't remember. Well, last week we had, um, Lyra oh, the lost boy. Uh, exactly. We, yes, we I remembered. Okay. I remembered. Sorry. Wow. It's, I am so rusty. I had lots of thoughts. I really, really liked the episode a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved, you know, being able to see, the Egyptians as they're moving north and having her have her little banter with Yorick. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was really cool to see the way she um, talked with John Fa to kind of get what she wanted. I love that she called him Lord Fa whenever she like wanted something <laughs> and he knew it. And he was just like, it. You know, it's like, I know you're playing me, but whatever. So yeah, it was so cute. It was, it was great. Um, yeah. That there, so I was watching it and I remember um, I remember our episode when we talked about it the first time, mm -hmm. like when we talked about it in the book and we talked about how this would be. And I was like sitting under like a blanket and like waiting for how it was going to be. Um, and I'll be honest, I was a little underwhelmed. Yeah, it wasn't right. I was not like I was waiting I just expected there to, like, he was just laying there, like, pretty mm. much motionless. And I guess I just felt like what was powerful in the book, I know it's not the book, but what was powerful in the book was this sort of really vacant calling for Ratter, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And and this sort of, you know, and, and, and the horror of it in the book was not to me it wasn't um it wasn't translated over into the into the show like i remember in the book it said it was like looking at like it would have been like looking at somebody without a face mm -hmm. and it didn't feel like that now I, it was shocking i mean you know, she was obviously shocked and she had empathy and she was like kind of like oh I, but i don't know it didn't have the same like wrenching yeah to me what yeah. did what did was and I can't help it was like when Ma Costa was crying at the grave like I that I was just like whoa what is with this show always making me like tear yeah up. yeah but I could you know that kind of thing like I, that was really that probably affected me more I think mm -hmm. than than Billy's reveal yeah we said something similar last week that uh, Ma Costa was what she was the anchor for that whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she was incredible. 
Um, I kind of think that they were kind of dealing with uh, the limitations of a child actor, you know? Right, because he's little. Yeah, and I think there's only so much that uh, he could he could be expected to do there, and um, it was uh, you know they they had to make do with with what they had, and I think with from a mo- from the the changes worked. It wasn't the scene from the book. Right. It absolutely wasn't the scene from the book, but it still worked. I uh, would for agree. me anyway. Yeah, no, no, I would agree. I would agree. It wasn't necessarily what I expected, mm-hmm. but I think that it was. It still it did what it was supposed to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. which was to to pull at your heart and make you like want to go rip Bullvanger out by the roots of it. You know, like like snatch its weave is what you wanted to do to Bullvanger. Like <laughs> you do want to snatch Bullvanger. You do. Don't you want to snatch its weave? Oh, my gosh. So much. Exactly. <sighs> and, um, you know, I have some similar concerns about this week's episode. Let's discuss. So I'm looking forward to discussing. Yes. So yes. let's start at the beginning with Lyra entering Ballvanger. You know, as she's walking in, I was kind of immediately struck by just how stark they made it. Mm-hmm. And I was a little pulled out of out of the show because to me, I felt like I was watching the limit their budget limitations as opposed to an a story idea you know mm-hmm. like that felt like a set mm-hmm. and i'm thinking about like um you know the movie when you're walking through like the big courtyard and that's the way i i i read it in the book so you know the the narrow hallways things along those lines kind of yanked me out of it i'm i just just to give you a heads up i'm gonna be a bit of a of a debbie downer this week yay yeah you're so positive all the time not this week it's okay you know what it's that's okay that's okay, okay. i think i i support that 100 percent. i appreciate that yes i though on the other hand mm-hmm. really liked it oh, i good. like like i know i know that you know like it wasn't as corporate you know, mm-hmm. I think we used that word when we talked about it mm-hmm. in the book, you know, and, and I think even in the movie, it was a little more, you know, uh, it was more upscale, sort of. Yeah. Um, but what I liked about it was it felt like it was a facility in the middle of nowhere that was like a bunker. For sure. So, like, and, yeah, and, bunker was the perfect word for it. Yeah. And, and so I felt like that's like, I'm not really sure you would be building this like, you know, they had drop ceilings in the <laughs> book and they had these like, you know mural and 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 i get the mural with the purpose of it but i i really did i liked it i felt like it 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 was the it it gave you the exact mood of the place which was stark and barren and terrible and that's what what is the name of bold anger again it's like place of evil or garden of nothing i don't know it's like something terrible i think is what it is right yeah and like no birds would sing like you know Mm -hmm. like in the and and that to me i felt like it was um like it, like I could, I liked it. I felt like it flowed with what I thought of for like what it would or should look like. So, yeah, it's funny. Like the way you say it now that I think about it, it's more it. I can imagine a maris, a magisterium that, going back to what I was saying about the budget, mm-hmm. is angry at Mrs. Coulter, and it's like, oh yeah, you're not getting the cash for this that you want. You're right. not getting the building from the movie. You're getting the you're getting this. So. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you had your penthouse, and now you're having this. Exactly. Like this is this is what you get. Right, sure. Exactly. No, I do. Um, so, couple, after she's walking through, mm-hmm. and we sort of accept like this is the bull anger, and she, um, you know, the week before she was processed. Right. You know, like processed through. Yeah. And you oh, know, back to that, what did you what did you think of that last week? Because um, I, when she was being processed, that was, I think, one of the worst. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, it was so stark. I mean, she's she's standing there as exposed as she possibly can be. Yeah. And realizes mm-hmm. where she is. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a great way to illustrate just how terrible her situation was. Oh, yeah. No. And how and how absolutely helpless. Like, mm-hmm. you know, be nothing more helpless than standing naked in a room with like. Mm-hmm. nothing and like three people like looking yeah. at you like clinically yes yes yeah. no i i you know so i thought that that was a great way to end it 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so then when, when she gets into the, she gets to the cafeteria mm-hmm. and she walks in and she sees Roger and I love it cause it was all in the DL. Yeah. They did it just like the book, right? Like yep. the little, the demons ran to each other and we're like, keep it like be chill. Right. You know? And, and Lyra actually stared at him longer, but, but uh, Roger was just like, you know, like, <laughs> it was just kind of nod like uh-huh. <laughs> and it was yeah so I, I i appreciate that they you know that they did that they i think they played that well i think yeah. they did that that well it, it was it was perfectly well done yeah i i wonder if there's like only one way to do that scene because that is exactly the way i imagined in the book and mm-hmm. then that is exactly the way they did it in the movie i mean that scene can only be done one way and uh yeah it totally worked for me especially like the the mural in the in Mm -hmm. on the far wall so they think they're in a tropical island i guess (laughs) they're totally fools (laughs) yeah what we're where (laughs) i like i love roger too because in the movie that roger was a little more um you know he was more passive yeah and a little more like excitable and this roger you know, he like knew what was going on. He he played it the way he needed to play. And when she came in, he knew exactly what he needed to do. I thought it was great. Yeah, this Roger is Ron Weasley to me. <laughs> you know, he's right. he's got he's got that same uh, uh you know air of mischief about him. He's a little he, he's smarter than uh, you give him credit for. I, I like this Roger a lot. I do, too. I do. I, and he's a little sarcastic. Like it's all the way at the end. Yeah. But at the end, um, well, I guess we'll talk about it at the end. Right. But I yeah, always yeah. want to jump. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're totally right. But then we had that girl who was taken to the lab. Oh, my God. Bridget. Yeah. Like. She was like, I didn't even have my dinner. She's like, I can't I just eat? I could just, eat come on. Come on. Just last meal. Go. Something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it was terrible. And and her little her little rabbit was like, you know, cowering behind her as it hopped. And she had those big glasses mm-hmm. like it was just all, you know, she was just all wide eyed. And, and it was. Yeah, it was it, I felt so bad for Bridget. Yeah, my my thing with that is I feel like this and this is a problem that I've had with the show consistently is that they keep undercutting the reveals that are coming later. Like I didn't need the foreshadowing for what the was going to happen to Lyra Mm -hmm. later. I I didn't, I didn't need that in the scene. Like I don't get why they need, they felt the need to like set that up here, you know? Right. Right. Just, it it frustrated me. Like I said, this is something that I've had consistent. I, I've said consistently since um, Lord Boreal first went through the, the portal, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just, I, my concerns with the pacing on this show remain. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I, I hear that. I hear that. I think that, I think that that's, um, that's fair. I feel like also if people haven't read the book, that it helps them, to maybe have a better sense of like what intercision really is or what severing is as they, you know, as they kind of walk her and they just kind of see a little bit of how it's going. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of is just, it helps people that maybe haven't read the book to build the, to To, build the drama, to remind you bad things happen to children. Right. Like we know, like we've internalized that after my God, after these podcasts, it's like, you know, it's a constant, but if you haven't read it, I don't think the urgency of it is, as upfront, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, because like, you're not, you, you don't know everything about the world. And so you're still kind of learning it as you go. Yeah. And it's almost like a reminder, like you said, like, Oh yeah. Hey, remember this thing, this thing's really bad. And this thing's probably going to happen again. Like that kind of thing. Right. Um, right. It's so more I than guess, just a, a dank architecture and, <laughs> right. and identical right. clothes. <laughs> bad things actually happen to you here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So yeah. But um but yeah, so then um something that popped out to me while they were taking out though is um the uh the, the 
that there's this sympathetic scientist, like that guy. Yep. You know, yeah. I don't know how to feel about him. Well, I wish I, I wish I could. I don't remember or recall seeing his demon, and I kind of would have. I would have liked to have seen like. Well, I can't remember if he if did it. Did they show his demon? I don't think so. I didn't think so. So I and I was curious because the other doctor, the one that he has like to drink with, and he can't quite right. drink because he's morally debating, you know, what they're doing. Her demon is a fox. Yeah. And it's very, you know, it's very fitting mm-hmm. for what she's doing. But like, I would is have liked to have seen. Is she the one who's capturing the kids in the in the town? I don't know. Because we, we, we kept seeing the fox demon. Oh, my goodness. Right? But that looks like a guy. It did look like a guy. Didn't it though? Like he looked like 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 you know yeah. more bulky like a guy. Yeah. She was she was pretty pretty thin, but it's kind yeah, of I'm doubling up on demons already. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, it's true. Of, of in the world of demons, you have like any demon of your pick. Exactly. Any animal. Hey, in the we world. both have foxes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Who that. Would have guessed. Maybe they're soulmates. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you think that happens? That would be wonderful. You run into somebody who's got the same demon. I love that. That would be fantastic. Or like my demon is is the kind of demon that will always overpower my husband's demon. <laughs> <laughs> so like we're a good match because my demon is always going to be able to pin your demon down anyway till I get my way. So your polar bear demon versus yes. his big pharma set. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, I, that guy, that guy, you know, that he wasn't, I, that for me is like, well, why did we need, why do we need sympathetic anybody in Bullvanger? Right. Like, why do we need anybody to say, like, to have questions or to feel like they're not, like, one of the things I appreciate in the book was they did, they had zero, they didn't give a F, right? Yeah. Like, they were just, like, annoyed that the fire alarm went off. Why are you disturbed by work? I've got yep. stuff to do. Like, what are you doing? And so I really don't feel like there was a need to have a sympathetic Bullfanger employee. No, they're bad people. Yeah. The place of evil. Right. And just Maybe. one, like, doesn't, you know. No. No. Like, what is that one guy going to do anyway? Exactly. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I kind of didn't need it. No. Um, but I guess I don't know why they did it. I guess for effect. Yeah. So then we had the fire drill. Again, yes. Which went well. I liked the fire drill. Lyra tossing the snowballs at the, who in my head is uh, an auntie from uh, what's Handmaid. Handmaid's. Exactly. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I love number one, that they at least had an orderly list. Yes. Like they were reading off the kids' names and they were all in lines. Like it was yep. much more organized than my teacher heart could just kind of relax for a bit, minute. I was like, okay. Yeah. They didn't have that disorder that they had in the book. Right. Which, which I actually... While visually, I was like, whoo, you know, my, but like, it makes more sense that if they were disorderly, because, right. you know, she, it's one of the reasons why the doctors don't want to show Mrs. Coulter, like, all the crap that's happening. It's like, mm-hmm. let's only show her the good stuff. And so that was part of the disorder. And it's part of how she could get away for so long. It felt to me like, for how orderly they already were, mm-hmm. one or two snowballs wouldn't have gotten them as riled up yeah. for as long as maybe they needed. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that and was it, like the whole whole um, you know the whole shtick in that in the book was that right. the they didn't know what to do with the kids really, mm-hmm. and Lyra was able to take advantage of that. Right, right. Like, like it feel you know, and and later on, like they all it's like an army, right? Like they stand at the edges of their bed, and everything's mm-hmm. neatly made. Like, and I and I don't think that that's how it would have been in the book. I didn't get that feel from it. Um, but I also, I, you know, I, I feel like what they were trying to have it come across as was basically like a prison. Yeah. And so then that makes sense for them to have it like that. But I felt like it probably should have been a little more disorderly mm-hmm. for them to have gotten as far as they did without being seen or, or sort of noticed. Yeah. Um, but I did love that she hit that woman right in the face. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. She was like, Phoop. it was great. <laughs> I was got an arm. She does. I was so- just great. Then they go into the the room where the demons are being held. Mm-hmm. Um, notably, however, it was missing a character. 
Brad. Kaiser wasn't there. Oh yeah, Kaiser didn't let him right because they were never like out. It wasn't an outside room like this in the book. Mm -hmm. It was like a separate space. Yeah. Right, and this was sort of like kind of connected through corridors. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, sort of because they had those outdoor corridors. Oh right, right, and those big gates opened. Yeah. When somebody came out and they went in. Right. So, yeah, there was no Kaiza, and I was a little disappointed to... I, I missed Kaiza. I liked Kaiza, you know, being the little, like, uh, breaking, breaking and entering guy. Well, I, I did. I, I, number one, I missed the magic mm -hmm. of it. Like, literally the magic of, right. uh, of how in the book, you know, it was such a, a, an amazing way for them to open the lock was when, he, you know, in the book, he blows the snow. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. loved, I loved that. And so I was kind of sad that that wasn't a part of it. But it's also... You know, seeing seeing him lets Lyra know that the witches are near and they're coming. Yeah. Do you right. know what I mean? Like there's yeah. and so there is hope in right. the form of Kaiser. Right. And and not that Lyra isn't brave enough to have done it on her own, mm -hmm. just you know, saying I'm gonna get us out and I know the Egyptians are hoping that they're able to make it up and get there. But like part of what really emboldened her was the fact that when she saw him, she was like, I, they're coming. Yeah. Like, I, they're totally coming. And I have this whole, you know, this whole plan now that I'm going to set in motion. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I did. I missed him, too. Yeah. Yeah. But For the sure. demons, they did a really good job, I thought, with the demons in there. They looked so sad. Oh, my God. The, oh, Bridget's rabbit was just I know. banging its head on the wall. You know, I, a story about that. One time I was at the zoo uh, with a, uh, a friend in uh, the, the, the zoo here in D.C. Mm -hmm. in the winter. And there was a giraffe outside doing the exact same thing. Oh. And that has stuck with me for, I guess it's 20 years now. They get more than 20 years now, good Lord. But um, yeah, the giraffe repeatedly bonking its head against a wall. Oh. And that's what I saw when I'm watching the, the rabbit. And uh, yeah, it was sa sad in real life, and it was it was sad in this show. I, I, it's a tough image. It was, and 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 it was, you know, it was really. I think what was powerful too was like when they see them, and I love when they say they're like, "Well, the demons are all still here. Mm -hmm. Like, where?" Where are the kids? Where are the children? Like, yep. where are they? And, you know, later on, we get an answer to that, which in the book, we never get an right. answer. Like, we never get an answer to that. And so I feel like later in the episode, they kind of close that up a little bit for you mm -hmm. to kind of take it, you know, just like we're going to tie that little bow up and put it away. Yeah, because like the demons kind of just flew off try trying to find their kids. Right. In the book. Yeah. Right. But these guys were all were all still there, right? Well, they did, and they didn't, right? And they didn't free them either, which made me a little sad. Yeah, like they didn't free the demons. Yeah. So, but, um, moving back to our world, we had Will. Yeah. What you watching a video of his pop? Oh, it was so sad. Mm -hmm. You know, like watching some C-SPAN video of like maybe not C-SPAN because that's like political stuff, like. But you know what I mean? Like just watching this little like it was like a BBC like yeah. little like interview with his pop before he went somewhere. Oh my gosh. And he was so cute. I mean, both of them. It's mm -hmm. Andrew Scott, right? Yeah. Isn't that that right? He was just, you know, playing this. It was it was cool to just see a little bit of his character um pre disappearing. Right. Because, you know, because he was very like he was joking and laughing and, mm -hmm. and the camera, you know, who is very like light. Yep. And I'm interested to see then how, cause that's who will seeing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that he's, and so that's kind of, I'm thinking, you know, that, that's how he's in pi picturing his father. And I'm interested in to see how they're going to counter that with whomever he is, whoever he becomes. Right. Now that he's not, you know, it's been 13 years since he's been in his own world. Yeah. You know, I was trying to think, imagine that, like what would like 13 years away from your kids, you know, like mm -hmm. the first, you know, couple months, maybe not be so bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. But, you know, like 13 years, like that's awful. Yeah. I mean, 
and then to to be lost, like completely disconnected from your entire world, lost. Uh, what he becomes has got to be really interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm kind of excited just to see because that was as much for us as it was for Will. Yeah, you know, for us to see that, and so I, I want to see what they what they do with it. Um, God, I hate those guys in the car, man. Ugh. Like it's just it's so. Last week, you guys were able to talk about um, Will's mom, mm-hmm. and you know I really appreciated. I felt like they handled her um, her mental illness or you know whatever. Like that, I think they handled it really well. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was it was believable. It wasn't overly done. You know, it wasn't yeah. a caricature. Um, it wasn't a pity story either. You know, she was aware. Of, mm. of a lot of like she knew how she was and so she like I wouldn't have come but I knew you know and so I thought they did a really really good job with her I agree. um it, it upset me that Boreal made his presence known to upset like to upset her on purpose like to kind mm-hmm. of throw her off like it made me feel yucky but this guy just sitting there like I don't know to, like he has zero vested interest except that Boreal's paying him right you know, and so they're sitting there, and then I think it's Tom, right? Tom's like, yeah. why haven't you gone in yet? Oh, you know, God. and he, yeah, he's like, she knows I'm here. Yeah. Like, he's just, it's just like, I don't know. Oh. Just, well, ugh. And he'll go in soon. Like, he, like, you know, he's biding his time to go in. And I don't know. It's just kind of, so he's never been in before. No. They've just been watching. I think he's gone in. Like I, I got the impression. I mean, last week when she had the, um, when she kind of, you know, had a fit because she noticed that things were out of place, mm-hmm. and um, so yeah, they've been in before, but um, I'm not sure, you know, why they're not going in now, except to be maximally creepy. Right, right, and yeah. I felt that same way last week. I felt like you know it was that it would it. She it really happened, but that it was easy to play it off as her paranoia mm-hmm. and for Will to play it off as like kind of like, OK, like, you know, but I felt like they probably like she really was noticing it. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. and that it was something that that happened. So. Right. Yeah. So I just I don't know. Yeah. That, and, I, and then the guy with the mu- he's got a mustache. I know. <sighs> It's like, you know, he's all greasy and weird. Yeah, like, I, I, he's a little over the top. He's a little cartoonish. Yeah, I hope he's the one that... F- he's gotta be. I hope he is. He's gotta be. I almost spoiled it. You did, but you stopped yourself. But I didn't, yes. Wow, you, like, dropped it. one of those green refrigerator bags <laughs> over <laughs> what you were going to say like, to prevent spoilage. I bet. I wonder. I hope. <laughs> I'm going to... Yeah, I hope it's him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> Looking forward to the cat. Yes. But they, uh, and then they cut, they cut back, they cut back, you know, as quickly as they cut to Will yeah. and cut to that world, they cut right back. Yep. Yeah. Like Will got like five minutes. Yeah. You know what's funny about Will? Mm-hmm. I, last week I said that he looked like one of my daughter's friends. Actually, mm-hmm. he looked like several of my daughter's friends. And, I expected when I told my daughter, because unfortunately she doesn't listen to the show. She's a monster. <laughs> um, that I, when I told her that she's like, let me see. So we immediately went to, to YouTube and I, I pulled up a clip of him and she actually agreed with me. Oh, like, oh my God. I want him. I want him to be my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I really like the voice you did for her. No, thank you. And I, <laughs> and I, I would, I would do that to her face every time she, like, you should just like mock everything she says in that voice. I, I, let me see. I love I, it. That was great. Me <laughs> let me see it. <laughs> and the thing is, she'll never listen to this, so it's okay. <laughs> You're gonna mock her the whole time. Exactly. Ah. I might do the, an entire show in her voice. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so man. we're back to Lyra, and uh, we've got the kids are sleeping. But they're woken up. What are they woken up by? Mrs. Coulter. Mrs. You Coulter know, and that airship. Yeah, they need some kind of like electric car, quiet engine. They wake yeah. everybody up everywhere they go. Yes. Like people know when they're coming. Like it's terrible. It's they like they could see the theme- monkey. 
I know. Yeah, they could see it. She's literally like, is it her? I can see the monkey. And I was like, what? How close are they? Exactly. Freaking you don't see monkey. that monkey. You're lying. But they but were yeah. scared. They were terrified. You know, like that, that I think was, a, was well played. Like they were all trying to get, you know, in yeah. order and, and like, oh my gosh, he's coming. And it was terrible when they were like, make it like, try to be good and try to be in order. So take a boy this time. Right. Like to me, like it was, that yeah. was, that was not, that was like, oh man. Yeah. Very, very like prison rules. Yes. You know, and not what you want to see like eight, nine year olds doing. No. And then they hide Lyra. Mm-hmm. And homegirl has some upper body strength. What? Look, do you remember that like president's physical fitness yes. test? And the, you had those stick, those like little things and you had to like put them in the notches and go up yep. and like, and go back down. Yeah. And every once in a while there was that meta human who could do who it could like five around. times yeah. like up and down. And you're like, well, I like, I could just like, I could hang there for like two seconds. That and was then it. I was like, Poof. Like, I don't know how Lyra. And it made a little poof on the ground when you hit, right? (laughs) (laughs) Like the roadrunner. And then, and then the gym teacher would just sort of hang their head in shame and disgust (laughs) that that you couldn't do that because, you know, what fourth grade, I don't know, whatever. Right. Those tests. Do they still have to do that? I don't know. I don't think so. I should ask my children, but instead I'll ask the audience. If anybody's listen, who's listening want, uh, knows that if kids still have to do that president's physical fitness challenge, let us know. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. That I'm was like, that was wild. But I'm sorry. Go on. No, no. It's just so she's hanging there. Yeah. And I'm just like, how are you For hanging a, while. a long time? Yes. And then there's the creeper monkey. Yep. And, I, you're, yeah, and, and that was, you know, I, I was... I knew that they wouldn't find her. Right. But it was that, you know, but it was like, he was so close to finding her like every time that you're just kind of like, you know, they do a good job at building up. They really did. That suspense. And again, yeah, maybe for- I expect him to like pull up the blanket, you know, a yeah. little bit. And then a little bit more. <laughs> and then, come yeah. on, monkey. And then pull that angry, like, wah, 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 you know, yeah. like getting all crazy because they- yeah. But I guess for, you know, again, for somebody who hasn't read the book- that would have been a very, very suspenseful moment because they wouldn't know whether or not that would happen. Right. You know? Right. So is, is that where, where she gets uh, captured? Right. But uh, I love Mrs. Coulter's, like, uh, when she pops back in, one more thing. <laughs> right. You guys are doing a great job. Just Good wanted job. to tell you. <laughs> Good going. I know. Good. Nice corners. Like, you know, tight corners in the bed. Great job. Exactly. It was so weird. Exactly. You just popped back in. I know. And she was like complimenting them on like how well they took Do care of themselves. Job. Yeah. I was like, what is that? That that that's that same weird, like ultra feminine or hyper feminine, like the thing Lord with Lord. her, where it's like, even though you're in Bulvanger and you're in prison girls you shouldn't be a mess and let's just make sure that you, you know everything's neat and proper and it was it's such a weird a weird dynamic but if you um, think about it that is the whole point of Bullfanger, right is to eliminate sin right and cleanliness next to godliness and all those things sure. you know they're trying to make people you know better mm-hmm. and if you're fans of firefly you know exactly what that does to people so you know, yes. so, so jumping forward to the Egyptians and uh, Lee on the cliff, um, I'm going to let you go first on this one. What do you think? What, that, that, that the sled almost fell? Yeah. And that he almost went down with it? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, there was a part of me that was like, you know better. <laughs> like, come on, Egyptians. Exactly. Although, in fairness, they are boat. They are water people. That's true. And this very well may be the first time that they had to traverse over like literal glacier, you know, crevice, large yeah. gaps and like, so yeah, but it was that fun little like jump scare of like, oh no, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I thought maybe somebody would go down. I was convinced somebody was going to go down. Yeah. I thought somebody was going to go down. I'm not going to say I was disappointed somebody didn't go down because that's kind <laughs> of a terrible thing to say, How but well- I was a a little disappointed that at least the sled didn't go down. Like somebody going down and like doing that Wilhelm scream would have been a, just, 
Mwah, perfect. Yeah. But no, the, the gypsies the are all engineers. Going, <laughs> exactly. Like the everything has to burst into flames. <laughs> so it falls down. It's just that was an exactly. Yes. But yeah, the Egyptians are not known to be good engineers. Uh, we know that now. Right. And um, but I, I like, this is another one of those scenes that I wish they hadn't done because mm. I like in the book when the Egyptians just show up and. Mm -hmm. You know, out of nowhere, Egyptians ex machina. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And here we know they're on their way. You know, now mm -hmm. we know that just took away the impact of that scene. It really so, did. Thanks, God. Yeah, yeah. no, you're, you're totally right. And I think, you know, part of what was so great in, in the story building in the book was that when those Samoy traders, you know, ambushed the camp. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going down and you see John Fogg go down and you see yep. all these people go down in the book. And then that's it. You have until no idea. They show up again, until you, they show you have up. no idea. That's yep. right. And, and there was something really, you know, powerful about that. And part of it was, was Lyra's kind of eternal hope. Mm -hmm. You know, she's always has this like, you know, this, this, this will happen. This will be good. And like, you know, we'll get through this. And um, so, yeah, I think I would agree with you. I, yeah. I feel like there was a little bit of a, you know, it's okay to not know that or see that. Yeah. Um, because then you get the, you know, the, the, the rousing, like, wow, yay. Cause they, you right. know, they come and they, which you Gorge get. Shows up. Yeah. yeah. Cause and like, you it comes out of nowhere and he starts like swatting yes. people. And right. that didn't happen. I know it. Oh. Yeah. Man. So I, 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 I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So next we've got the intercision scene. That that got me. Did it? It did. Okay. It. I don't know why. I really don't. Maybe it's because I'm tired, and it's like close to Christmas break, <laughs> and my defenses are down. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, when they put her when they put her in there. Yeah. At first, and she's just like, you don't know who I am, like, you know. But but when mm. she starts, and then she starts to scream. And yeah. I, and I hate, I, I hate hearing, I just really do hate hearing children screaming for like help. I just, no. I don't like to hear it. It's yeah. just disturbing for me. Um, but then, you know, Daphne Keene does such a great job. She's so convincing mm -hmm. that she's frantic and she's so yeah. convincing that she's, you know, like his almost hysterical. Yeah. And I really felt like when Ruth Wilson came in, she, she nailed it. Mm -hmm. Like her reaction to me, like nailed it. And it was, I think, dare I say, almost better than Nicole Kidman's. <gasps> I know. What? I know. But there was, she, it, there was, I don't know. There was something about the way that she reacted that mm -hmm. felt so real to me. In yeah. a way that was and earned and mm -hmm. earned that mm -hmm. it wasn't earned in that movie for for Nicole Kidman, but the way that Ruth Wilson has been playing this character, yeah, with these small bits of regret and these small bits of like longing and wanting to be who she really can't be for Lyra, yeah, it just I don't know, it hit me yeah. like I was kind of like, <gasps> you know, like my breath was a little taken away, and and it, yeah, I don't know, it was I thought it was really well done. Okay. What do you think? Um, I did not have the same opinion. Um, I mean, firstly, like the the intercision thing machine mm -hmm. looked like the racist detector from Watchmen. So that <laughs> the pod. Yes. <laughs> so that pulled me out of it right away. So I'm just like, oh my god, it's the pod. <laughs> I'm waiting to see the looking glass come out of it, you know? It's just Here's like, some oh, nine inch nails in the background. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was I was kind of disappointed with the way it it happened. Because mm. it just happened. They called her name and she went in. Yeah. We didn't have the whole, you know hiding in the drop ceiling scene where she's pulled out, even the hiding under the table scene that she did in the movie. Right. There was the, the, the tension that um, pulled her in there. The, 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 cause what I thought 
was powerful about that scene was that the scientists were doing it because they were awful people. Right. They were trying to hide their incompetence from Mrs. Coulter. Yes. So they were going to, you know, basically murder this kid. Mm-hmm. And, and this was just like part, part of doing business. Let's right. just get Lizzie. And, uh, I didn't feel the same tension or intensity. So I remember when we did that show, you know, we were pretty horrified by oh, that right. whole scene. You know, the way Pullman wrote that scene hit on multiple levels. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, while I do understand the 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 horror of the child screaming and I I do think Daphne Keene did a great job, um, you know, interpreting that I was kind I just didn't feel the same levels of revulsion that I felt reading that scene. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think because of that, it was just, it just lost its power for me, you know, because I, like, I I think there were like three, it hit on like three, three or four different levels in the book. And here it's just that, I mean, we even had, you know, sympathetic scientists again, again, should we do this? Yeah. I I hear that. I I hear that. Mm -hmm. You're killing me. You're killing me smalls. Yeah. No, I, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. And maybe what was more, maybe what impacted me more was just, was just Ruth Wilson's reaction to it. Um, But I agree with you, the urgency of covering up the, er, you know, the, 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 the trauma and the horror of him touching her demon in the book um, is undercut. It it, it takes it, you know, and, and I, that's I would agree with that. Um, And even the fact that she says, you don't know who I am. You don't know who I am. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Coulter, Mrs. Coulter. And then she yells mother. And it's like, I don't think you would have needed, again, you don't need him no. to be questioning and you don't need her to be saying those things. What made that seem powerful was the imminent danger. Yes. And her realizing, Mrs. Coulter realizing, oh my God, that's Lyra. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Lyra knew what was going to happen. And I thought the, the performance of the, the voice actor for pan mm-hmm. in this scene was really good. You know, yeah. when he kept like yelling, like Lyra do something. Like, he needed to do her to do something. And again, going back to the fact that he's a part of her. So that's Lyra desperately trying to find a way out too. Mm-hmm. like that. Um, I, I, I thought was really well done. But, uh, but yeah, it, like you said, she didn't need to have to say, she shouldn't have needed to say all those things. Mm-hmm. The fact that she was in peril should have been enough. Agree. I agree. Um, I have a question or an observation. Indeed. If, is there anything about that intercision machine that could possibly keep a demon from shifting a shape? Because there were holes and couldn't Pan have like turned into like a little wasp and like, yeah, like, do you know what I mean? I think we may have touched on that in the last, when we did the movie. Um, What did, what would you I don't think we came to any kind of conclusion then either. Okay. Because I, I think maybe we, the guess was that there's a, I thought maybe there was electricity. Mm -hmm. Um, but there couldn't be because if Lyra accidentally touched that, you know, that kind of ends that experiment really quickly. So yeah, I don't know why he didn't just like turn into a moth and get over to her side. Maybe it's just like fight or flight or freeze. And you freeze. I don't know. I would feel like that also probably happens so quickly. You probably don't really have time. Like the only reason that didn't happen immediately was because, you know, the, the doctor was, Holding him. Yeah, holding it up. Yeah. So, just all right. Like, all right. Yeah, he's he was pointless. Yeah. I'm glad he gets... We'll get to that. Yes! <laughs> we are so, like, bloodthirsty today. <laughs> we wish people would have fallen and, like, just cut that guy. Just cut that guy. <laughs> cut, oh, him, man. cut him low. <laughs> all right. Mrs. Coulter's bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. 
this scene, I don't know. So, I again, I really liked it. Um, I feel like they are still trying to play a sympathetic Mrs. Coulter. You know, in both the movie and here in the show, it's I didn't. I wanted to keep you. I couldn't. Asriel had plans, and you know, mm. she made these weird excuses too. Yeah. I wasn't equipped. Like I wasn't like I'm thinking, how old were you when you had her? I mean, not that young. Yeah, right. Like she couldn't have. Why I mean, was it was 12. eleven. Yeah, it was like eleven or twelve years ago. So yeah. it's like you're easily. I mean, I don't know. She was at least in her late 30s, maybe right. early 40s, right? So I'm like, I don't. So she wasn't equipped. It wouldn't have been best for you or me. And I'm like, that's such a cop out. Well, to be fair, not being equipped could mean that because she was married. And true. She wasn't prepared to deal with what society would do to her. Right. Right, right, right. That, I mean, I could see that because up until that point, they didn't know what was going to happen. And then, of course, later on after Azriel has her. Right. He offs Mr. Coulter. Right. But I don't know why they keep trying to, I, I guess, I guess to make her more complex. Yeah. And that's okay. I mean, the fact is, is, you know, it's kind of nice to know there is a little humanity in her. Mm hmm where she can say has whatever weird connection for her daughter that she has, she still kind of wants to have it right in the book. It's pure manipulation. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's pure yeah. manipulation and it's disgusting. But in here it's those moments where she loses control and thinks for a second, she can maybe actually have something. Mm -hmm. And then she snaps herself back, you know, like when she was upset and crying, then she's like, Oh, I can't believe I just lost control. Like I have mm -hmm. to, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, yep. So I don't hate it. I don't hate that they make her sympathetic. Um, but I don't know that I love it either. Yeah, I don't. It's an, another thing that I don't need. You know, like I, I like that Ruth Wilson wants to bring complexity to the character. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, but I don't think that we need we, we need it with her. She's an awful person. Full stop. Done. I, 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 I'm perfectly content accepting her as just a bad person. Right. You know? Mm. So, because then, I mean, she, we're reminded that she's a bad person when uh, she, she's like, if you have any friends who are here, you know, I'll save them. And Lyra's like, Billy Costa's dead. <laughs> like, he's dead. And she's like, he's like, <laughs> Well, that is unfortunate. I mean, <laughs> that was so omelets weird. and eggs. I know. <laughs> like, come on, man. I know. No, for sure. You're sure. But, it was just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, but, uh, but yeah, I think that for me, though, that was the, that was what set Lyra off when she's like, oh, no, this is, uh, I'm, I'm putting an end to this. Mm -hmm. And uh, first time in this whole series, because I've been, I, I'm a big Lyra fan. Don't get me wrong. I, I love what Daphne Keene is doing with her role. I, I like her. But at no time have I really believed that she's Lyra Silvertop. You know, mm -hmm. like she was, she's never been the kid. Because in the way they've, they've been playing her, to me, I feel like her honesty and directness has been what's been like at the forefront, not so much her lies. Right. But the way she manipulated her in this bedroom, like this is, yeah. this is the first time we saw it. Yeah. And I, and I think it's, again, it's sort of like parts in the book where after certain events happen, she kind of comes to new conclusions about where she stands and who she's with. I mean, yeah. and li and literally in this scene, Mrs. Coulter says, "You have to choose a side." Right. Like now, now you have to you have to you have to pick who you're going to stand with. Yep. And and she does. Um, so yeah, no, I really I do think that this is where she actually was coming out in that way that I think you and I were both talking about before. It's like it's not quite. She's not quite that. Um, mm. She does. She plays her man. She plays her like a fiddle. 
It's like, well, here it is. You know, like, oh, nice. Nice. Now, do you, did she put that in her, did you see her in the last episode have the spy fly one? Did she always have it on her? She always had it on her. But we don't see why she just randomly had it in her prison clothes. Right. Because in the, in the book, and I know it's not the book, but in the book, mm-hmm. you know, she purposely sticks it in her boot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she has that. And then that's why she has it on her when she's in bold anger. Yeah. We never see her hide it. Right. In, in this, like we just, she's got it. Because did we then see, did we see, and I, I really don't remember. Did we see Yorick make the second case for it? Do you know what I mean? Like, did no, we ever we saw um, Farter Corum when he captured the spy fly? He just bent it and he put it in that box it. that just happened to look exactly like, like the, the lithiometer okay. case. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, it was like this time she's just bling. Yeah. So, and I'm being a little nitpicky. I'm not sure why. But I'm no. picking up on your negative vibe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so then she escapes, the spy fly pops out, freaks everybody out. This is culture goes straight down. Straight down. Like straight down. Yeah. I didn't even realize it like attacked or touched her. Maybe she's got a phobia. Uh, Maybe. It (laughs) was like. Terrified of spy fly. (laughs) <laughs> that bug was like, she was just, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess it stung her did in the she face. Have blood pressure? Why? Why did you fall? No, like it was. That? I mean, that was crazy. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah. So then Lyra, you know, dashes out, and then grabs a fire extinguisher, does the uh, stereotypical. I'm going to break the controls, which will lock the door. Which always works. Yes. Always works. It does always work. It unlocks think, doors or locks doors. Yes. And I think it even works even better when you're screaming at the top of your lungs. What was that? That was so They were just like, rah, 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 rah. and I thought, oh my God, like, is this just showing you how they're alike? They're raging from two different places about, you know, what I mean? like it was just, yeah. it was an odd, yeah. It was like, I got it from Mrs. Coulter because we've, you know, all the way back to when she did the monkey style Kung Fu on, the, <laughs> the, on what's his name? Like I, Tony and his, and his buddy, we, you know, we've known that she's had that animalistic t- tendency, mm-hmm. you know, but here when she just kind of like lets loose and she's like screeching like a howler monkey and then Lyra is doing it back at her yeah. and then Pan's like, oh, slow down. I know he's <laughs> like, oh, you got it. <laughs> Exactly, and I get liars too. Like liars, I mean, I th- it's both out of like frustration, yeah. you know, and yeah. her, you know, liars frustration at like I cannot believe this woman's my mother. <laughs> I can't believe like I'm yeah. in this predicament again. And then Mrs. Coulter is like, I can't believe my daughter did that again. Like, I know she left me again. Yep. Um, so I'm surprised. Like that was that was a little that was a little odd there. Yeah, but yeah. um. But yeah, they would just have that screaming match, and then she runs into the room, right? Doesn't she run? In, does she run no. and get dressed first, or does no, she, she go ran, to the? She ran to get uh, Roger and the crew first. We're already getting suited up. That's right. That's They're right. already, and then she sends Roger in to rescue yeah. the other kid, the kids. Yes, she goes to get the kids that are in that, and then she goes to get the to destroy the machine. Yeah, because right. she has like my favorite line when she's like, uh, I'm gonna do what I do best, cause chaos." <laughs> I love, it. I love, I love when Pan says when they go into that room, um, and Pan says, "I remember they said if you leave that door open, it would fritz it." Yeah, and then Lyra says, "So let's fritz it." <laughs> <laughs> oh I, no! It cracked me up. I was like, "What an." I guess that was like a, you know, like some kind of battle cry, like, let's fritz it. <laughs> Man, did they fritz it. They really did. Way better than like the book. Yeah. The book was more just like a kind of a little fire, little, ex- this was like, things were sucking in and 
bending and right. It was crazy. It's like she had like a, 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 a uh, there's like the singularity opened and all these things yeah. <laughs> get sucked in. I was like half expecting Bullfanger to get sucked in after them like Poltergeist style. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> right. And then I love that eventually Pan's like, uh, this is going to blow. Like we got to go. Because they're just watching it like, you know, break into itself. And there's like, right. and it, and but it was a great explosion too. Like when she like, gets around the corner, that was yeah. a great, that was great. Yeah. Well done. Very well done. Um, so then you've got Mrs. Holter trying to escape from her locked bedroom. And the monkey climbs up to the top, th- diehard style. And then Mrs. Holter's in the thing, diehard style. But I'm left to assume Mrs. Holter climbed up that, uh, climbed up that thing like the monkey. I think so. Yeah. She would have had to. Because then when she came out of it, she landed like the monkey. She was, yeah. She landed here like she was all like on the desk. Yeah. Kind of squatting. Yeah. It was an odd. Now, part of me, I I wonder, there's something about Mrs. Coulter and how she identifies with that golden monkey. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, I also think about, you know, like the actor who's playing Lord Boreal. And how he's chosen to make his performance more, you know, serpentine and everything, which I appreciate. I'm not sure if this doesn't have, if there's not some kind of in-story reason for like her extreme um, association with the monkey that I like it. Like, I feel like there should be some reason, like she is monkey-like. Right. I mean, and that's the whole reason demons become what they become, like what they choose right. is because it's a part, it's a part, they are, they are defining a part of you yeah. exter- externally. Yeah. And so, you know, it makes, it makes perfect sense. Um, but she, I don't know. Yeah. That was, that was nutso when she ends, you know, jumping down and, and then she yeah. just sat there. She just yeah. sat there on the desk, and then it was like, well... With her arms over her knees, like a monkey. Yeah. I mean, at least in this time, they actually, like, we saw how she got out. Yeah. Because in the movie, and I think even in the book, you're just like, she's attacked by this spy fly, and then it's, you know... She's out. She's out. Like, who knows how she gets out? And this at least gives her some agency. Right. You know, which, great. Like, she, you know, she finds her own way out. I think one of the things I love about that part, then, is after she gets out and she comes around the corner she sees um well i guess I'm, we're jumping ahead yeah she's yeah and yeah, actually I, I, I jumped ahead because i'm i started talking about how she jumped out of the thing but uh but yeah we had the kids like running through the hallway and then egyptian show up yes the sympathetic scientist is there trying to persuade the kids to like go back in yeah and then ma costa rolls up oh man She's like, you know, Billy Costa. And he's, you know, and then he, what, is, what does he say? I was just following orders. Wrong, wrong. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. my God. And I wrote, I wrote, Ma Costa. Damn. Because <laughs> <laughs> she broke his neck. She was and broken was like, Damn. And what? then out of nowhere, Lee scores me. I was like, double damn. Because yeah. was like, Pushing. and then. <laughs> Serafina Pegula <gasps> just comes. She's like Quicksilver. Holy shiz. Yes. Oh my gosh. She's just, all, and I was like, what? My brain yes. exploded. Just it like exploded. killing fools. Oh my and, God. Uh, you know, the, the woman with the fox demon, she's just like, uh, get that one. Save the children, <laughs> you know, kill everybody else. And then Serafina Pecola just like, nope, kills everybody else, stabs her. Like, wow. Which is why, which is why if Kate, Kaisa, 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 if Kaisa yeah. was, would have been there, would have made, you know, like we yeah. only see Serafina Pekka that little bit of time. And she says to Farda Korm, she's on their side. Right. But, you know, I don't think it would have taken away from the moment for them to know that, you know what I mean? I think it would have made that moment then like, it would have felt more like vindicated, like, yeah, here she comes. And, you know, she's feeling she's doing this thing versus just kind of like, oh, like there she is. Right. Uh, but she was amazing. I oh, mean, yeah. don't, I'm, I'm not I, don't, I am not detracting from that moment at all. Oh, yeah. 
That was fantastic. She was awesome. She was she awesome. Was to- you were right. She was totally like quick. It was like Quicksilver. Yeah. That was awesome. <sighs> that was amazing. So again, you know, the tiny courtyard frustrated me mm-hmm. because, you know, it's it's funny. I'm I'm calling this out because somebody asked me on on um, online this week. Uh, do you guys talk about the differences between the books and the and the and the show? I'm like, oh yes, <laughs> oh yes. Oh, I- and now that I when I watched uh, this week, my my thought was, oh, I'm definitely going to be talking about the differences because the um, courtyard again bugged me. Because I love the scene in the book when the kids are all lined up, the yes. Tartars are all lined up, and then we and they're wolves. You know, it, you've got to have a broad vista for that. And this just reminded me of like '90s syndicated television, like you know, um, Super Force or some some Canadian sci-fi show. And uh, I I just was not uh, not 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 a fan of. I hate. I, I totally sound like a, a nitpicking nerd, but I'm like, I, I'm not a, a fan of how it was staged. It just right. felt so limiting. Well, and, and, you know, comparing things to the book, that was an epic, that's an epic, like, battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's a pretty big, right? Yeah. And it's how it's basically how we see that the the Egyptians are like to be taken seriously after what just happened to them. They just went through what should have been, you know, a battle where, you know, we saw saw John Fa and all these Mm -hmm. other guys go down and then they're they all come back and then they're they win in a similar environment. Yeah. So, yeah, I just uh, it, it just it felt too small to me. Yeah. Because then Serafina Pekka, as awesome as that was, literally took out everybody in like one foul swoop. Right. So right. it was, yeah. And I, it was I, just I, Serafina Pekka instead of like a bunch of witches shooting their arrows. Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah, it was, uh, I guess it's, it's the limits of the budgets of, of, of a television budget as compared to a movie budget and, you know, mm-hmm. our budget free imaginations. But, right. Uh, right. you know, I, I wasn't too keen. I will say, though, that I, t- I totally dig whatever tattooed or, like, I don't know if it's, like, burned in. It's, like, scar tattoo. I don't know what it is, those designs all over Serafina Pekka's That's... body. They're they're beautiful. Yeah. I love it. I don't know. You know what I mean? But it looks, it's, like, it's like raised. I can't tell. Yeah. Kind of like Drax, but pretty. Right. <laughs> like, it's, like, you know, <laughs> like, it's, like, weird, like, scar art. I don't know. But yeah, but, uh, totally right. it, it's really beautiful. It's really, really. They they put some they put some money into that, I think. And I'm sure there's there's a story behind all of that, mm-hmm. behind each of them, because I mean they've done so such a good job with like building the world up. So I'm sure that there 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 are all kinds of backstories, mm-hmm. you know, elements to that too. Yeah. But then we've got Mrs. Coulter in that scene. Back to the book, yeah. we had like this like third level fight. You know, so the the kids escaped. Then we had the uh, that's that's level one. Then we had level two where the Egyptians and the and, and the Tartars are fighting. You could even add a third level in, in between there, but when the witches show up. Uh, so then the next level though is like during the escape when Mrs. Coulter is trying to get Lyra and you know her last ditch effort to get Lyra. And in this, that's not what happens. And I was right. sad. I was too. It, it was her peeking around a corner. Mm-hmm. And then there was this look like she sees Ma Costa. I think it was Ma Costa hugging, yeah. hugging Lyra. Yeah, Lyra was hugging the kids, like taking care oh, of the yeah, kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was, hug- she was hugging Bridget because yeah. Roger had, had, had gotten them to come right. with him somehow, had gotten them to let's go. Yeah. Um, and then there was this weird look of like, regret or self-pity yeah. or I couldn't tell words was she ir- like was she irritated was she jealous I I couldn't t- I couldn't read her face um, I didn't see it as irritated to me she just looked like sad and defeated like defeat right yeah yeah 
I had written down Not like regret, all. defeat, self pity. Like what? What yeah. is she feeling there? None of those are Mrs. Coulter feelings. No, no. So I didn't like that at all. Yeah, because because the part of the power of it is that she will. She part of the of the of the threat is that she'll never stop. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's she'll never stop. She's always going to come for you. Yeah. Spy fly, grabbing you back into her sledge, like. You know what I mean? Like, and, and yeah. so it, it, it was a very resigned move. Right. Um, that didn't and it wasn't quite even like fit. a strategic retreat. Right. It's like, right. I'll get you next time. Mm -hmm. No, this was just like, oh, yeah. And walks away. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I had a hard time. I, I wasn't really sure why they did that. Yeah. Um, but after that, <gasps> They cut over to the balloon. They did. Right? And the Egyptians just let her go. They just let her go. They wave bye-bye. Bye. It was like the Wizard of Oz. They yes. were like, bye. Yes. <laughs> You've got somewhere else to go. What? <laughs> You're going to send her off to go to the land of, of, of ice bears? Oh, man. By herself with, with just like Lee and another bear and Roger. I mean, Roger's yeah. got a cutting wit, but I wouldn't. <laughs> right. Right. Like, come on, Ma Costa. I know. No, it, it's you. It, you know, the reason they're even up there is because it was an escape. Yes. It was an escape from the sledge. It was an escape from the big battle. And they're, and they get her and they get York and they get on there and they're just, they're just trying to get away. And in that, in, you know, in, in, in that other things then happen, but it's like, this was like, you know, we're off to see the wizard. Yes. <laughs> it really was. There's no um, place like home, everybody. Yeah. You know, just come yeah. on. There I, was I, a very dear moment where like Lyra and Roger were like cheek to cheek and we're just like, it was really cute. You know what I mean? They were just like, oh, it you know, was and, yeah. And, but, and that was, it was way too cute. It was pretty cute. Yeah. yeah, it was probably too cute. Yeah, I, I was uh, just not happy. And there was just no tension. And then they didn't uh, set Ballbanger on fire. I know. I wanted flames. I was sad. Uh, I you don't sad. walk out of that place and leave it intact. I know. You set it on fire. Yeah, it was, you were to raise that to the ground. To the ground. To the ground. Yep. So... And so then we've got the Egyptians making their long walk back to their boats. And um, John, Fa, and Ma Costa, what's up? Okay, so I have to be honest here. Okay. Um, about eight minutes to the end of the episode, my, my house blew a fuse. Oh, no! <laughs> so by the time we got everything back up, we had to do our podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> I am, I'm going blind. Okay. I'm running blind. Okay, so I got as far as I got as far as like I got as far as Serafina and and um Lee having their conversation, which was a good one. Which I was I was glad I was really glad they had it. Yes. I like that it showed Lee's like hesitancy. Yeah. You know that same kind of like, look, I'm getting into something bigger than I thought and I'm not really sure I want to and she's kind of like, look, like this is a bigger this is bigger than that you and yeah, yeah. so I was glad that they had that. Yeah, um, I liked it too. I liked it too. Um, but so you didn't see the Egyptians take their long walk. Okay, what? so let Isn't me set the horrible? scene for you. I'm so sorry. It's all good. So <laughs> they are walking through the woods, woods now like a, an autumn wood as opposed to the winter wood. Okay. And um, the kids have all gotten their matching snow gear now. I guess they went back in and got dressed rather than set the place on fire. And, um, you know, uh, John Fa says that, you know, I really thought we were going to bring Billy home. And, um, you know, Ma says, oh, you know, he's the one who made this happen, blah, 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 blah. Actually, Liar had said that earlier. Right, right. And, um, you know, they're talking some more. And then uh, John Fa holds Ma Costa's hand. Like, what? takes her hand gently. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to yeah. have to go back and watch it. Yeah. I would have screamed. I would have written that in my notes. Yeah, because 
Here's what I wrote in my notes. Are John Fa and Ma Casa together? Why is this not clear? Why is it a mystery? <laughs> like, I don't get it. I mean, if they're together, you know, say it. Right. Like, it doesn't hurt anything. It takes right. nothing away from anyone. Like, I don't need a, I don't need a Jim and Pam scenario where it takes them like exactly. nine seasons to like get together. Like I just either just come on, be no. together. Don't be together. Just exactly. Together. And easy. is Billy his son, which is what we've been asking every week. Right. And I'm, I'm leaning towards yes. Now I'm leaning towards yes. now. But don't you uh, think he would be a little more, would he have been a little more upset? that he was missing like he seemed not cool about it like yeah. cold but he just seemed like you know we'll get him back but not like that it was his son getting back he's the king of the egyptians maybe he's got to maintain some distance True. maybe the egyptians are a li little freer in their lifestyles and john may have several billies throughout the the fleet like bambi's dad yes he's like, like bambi's dad yes Aloof, but right. still watching. Exactly. Your mother Holy can't crap. be with you anymore, Billy. Yes. That's yeah. the most gut wrenching. Oh. God, help me that movie. Wow. Wow. Well, now, yeah. What now I'm only going to see him as like Bambi's dad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I ruin everything. I, I, <laughs> I say stuff like that, and it's like, damn it. <laughs> oh. So then we went to, uh, got back on the balloon and, uh, cliff guests. Oh my God. Did up. I miss the cliff You missed the cliff guests. Yeah. So you need to find the encore, uh, presentation like too sweet. Oh my God. Because there were cliff guests and they were actually scary. Oh my Lord. Um, they were like bat monkeys, but white. Oh, ew. That yeah. like weird gray white no they were like um polar bear white they had white fur oh they had fur yeah yeah they weren't like just skin and like pasty like i like subterranean thing like white these like were like, like furry a, white so not and like a bat person no like bram no. stoker's dracula no which is what i ex i expected yeah. but these guys were still terrifying Ooh. And it was it was really well done because they had like these rows of like tiny sharp teeth and just yeah they were awful and uh, Lee was like popping them left and right but uh, you know to no avail because as in the book Lyra got knocked out of the uh, the gondola oh she held God. on for moments and Lee's like get her and York's like you've got to bring her back in and then. Uh, <laughs> York said that uh, Lee, Lee's like, York. give me your hand. And uh, she falls. And that's when she's like, ah, like oh, my God. I she cannot. screams like a, a couple of times. It's like one of those where you catch your breath halfway through the scream and then you scream again. So she's like, ah, ah. So she's falling for a while. And that's how the episode ends. I cannot believe I am so lame. Well, I guess my fuses are lame. Yeah. I feel so bad. That is like, oh my Lord. I can't even, I can't even, I'm so, I'm, I apologize to everybody out there that I had zero to add to the end except probably shock and shame. Well, it gave me the opportunity to, you know, scream like ah. that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. So that was, uh, that was that. That's insane. I am picturing the cliff guests looking like, remember in the time machine? Yes. Um, no, not the, not the newer version, not the reboot that had um, Guy Pierce in it, but like the original and time Jeff machine. Myers. And they, 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 they were kind of like those hairy. Yeah. Weird, like that's what I, that's what I'm kind of, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, of. They were kind of like that. Were they? So, yeah. Oh. Except they had like flying squirrel wings. So yeah, it was uh, it was neat. or a little bit like the Gremlins in um the Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone, a little yeah. bit like that too, maybe. Yeah, or at least that's what I was picturing. The uh, the James William Shatner, I mean. Yeah. Oh Twilight yeah. Zone? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You were going to see the James Seeker. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> but we all would have been like, "Yep, that episode," because 
<laughs> yeah. Have best. you ever seen the uh, Third Rock from the Sun episode um, with Shatner? Where um, I probably did, but I, oh my God, I don't remember it. I used to watch the, that. I love that show. There's one where, um, what's his name? Uh, John Lithgow. Oh, wait. Up, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He picked Shatner up from the airport. Gosh. And Shatner's like, uh, he's like, how was your flight? There was a thing on my wing. Oh my God, it happened to me too. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's that. excellent. Oh, that was a great show. Very that was a great was. show. So are you guys taking to like talking about the Watchmen now at like every end of every episode? Yeah, we have because been. I Do heard you, you talking talk about it last time. Like Do you last want to talk about Watchmen? I, I mean, I'm not even sure what I could... I, that was insane. I I was I, don't, so I don't even have words. It was so good. What the heck? It, Every single week I is know. so good. I know. I love it. I loved, and my husband. I don't think, I don't think he liked it as much as I did. See, and Kim I was told me that she didn't like last week's episode. What? And, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Really? Yes. Huh. Let's move down. I don't didn't, know. but I was gonna. Because <laughs> we had the show. So I was like, I can't move out now. Yeah. You've but, gotta keep your basement. Yeah. But yeah. yeah I don't know. But this week's know. episode, oh my god. I know. And I loved I love how they keep taking these things that are from the like the original graphic novel and they are flipping it. Yes. I love that cat. I love that he chose Cal's form. He chose to keep it. Right. Like it's such a gr- it's so it's so great, but it was such an it- I loved seeing his backstory. Yep. It was fascinating to watch him experiencing time simultaneously. Mm-hmm. You know, it was cool to see him as he's kind of bantering with Angela, who takes nobody's like no. who takes nobody's. No. And and can, like you even know, like pseudo God. Yes. She's like whatever. She's like whatever, and, and you know, she he can't, not, not not that he's flustered, but he's just like, why can I not get a grip about like he's like I just I cannot get you to just you know. Why am I um, through? Yeah. So that that was crazy. Um, I will say though that at the end of last week's episode, when like at the first like whack. Yes. I was just like, you know, yes. all I kept thinking was, don't let the kids wake up. Don't let the kids wake up. Same. Oh Same. Because they already but, saw their parents, like, die. Yeah. So now they're going to walk in and see, like, you know, Uncle Cal getting clubbed upside the head by Aunt Angie. Yeah. So uh, I have two questions. I have two questions. Number one, did he, when he came out and he was just like, <laughs> When like killing everybody with his blue yeah. wave of whatever and just like exploding their heads like Mars attacks. Yeah. He killed every single person. Every single one. Okay. So then when the gun turns and gets him. Remote controlled. Well, who was doing it? From the um headquarters, the worst the the empty JC Penny. Okay. So I'm guessing it was like Senator Keen. Okay. That's my guess. Not like he was doing it because it had to happen. I don't think so. I mean, that would be crazy if that's what happened. I mean, that would be like wild if that's what happened. But, I'm not sure uh, why I would think that would happen, but I'm just saying, like, I was trying to think, I was like, why did it turn? Because there wasn't, I didn't think there was any indication that there was a remote control for it, but maybe I missed it. Well, what's so crazy to me about that is that he's such a fatalist, is that he could have stopped that at any second. I know. I just no. It's gonna happen. It's what happens. It's gonna happen. What? It's what happens. What? Yeah, yeah. And then my second question is: There's all this stuff with eggs. Yes. So, do you think somebody might eat an egg? I think she's going to eat an egg next week. You think she's going to eat an egg? I think she's eating that egg next week. Just eating an egg. Was he, was he making those eggs when he was making the waffles? And he was like, be careful with those eggs. <gasps> he said that, didn't he? Yes. Yes. You think that's where, it, like, but yes. she broke those eggs. She did. Mm, I'm just curious. 
But yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. She's huh. she's gonna eat an egg and she's gonna get uh, the Doctor Manhattan powers. Because there was too many eggs <laughs> for the entire <laughs> series. I mean, when eggs. she's introduced, <laughs> right. she's breaking eggs into the smiley face. That's right. I love it. I that's mean, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're totally so, right. Though I saw somebody say something really, really funny about uh, the the head exploding scene is that uh, a black superhero was making white racist heads explode. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. It's like this is awesome. This I show is it. fantastic. Oh, and did you man. see the post credit scene? No. Yeah, there's a post credit scene. Oh my god! I am missing everything. You are. I am missing everything. They oh my god. flash to uh, Adrian Veidt. On Europa, and they're all smush. And um, each of the Phillips uh, and um, Mrs. I'm sorry, I forgot her name, are um, asking him if he'll if he pro- he'll promise to stay. And he says no. And they squish a tomato in his face. And they keep yeah, they keep doing it over and over while he's like tied up to this like thing. Oh. And uh, then they um, put him in a cell, and he's reading that book that the farmer mrs clark was yeah. reading but uh was reading well at her farm and uh, i don't know if you know but the book is written by one of the writers that he kidnapped and murdered and uh, to uh clone into the squid to to to, to make the story for the squid oh yeah so he's reading the book and um the the gameskeeper brings in uh, one of, another one of those cakes, and this cake has a horseshoe in it. And he pulls the horseshoe out of the cake and uses it to dig his way out of the the, the jail cell, and that's how the episode ends. What? Yes. Yeah. I've got a lot of rewatching to do. You do. You I do. really do. But it's it was it's so good. Like TV is so good right now. Yeah. I don't I don't know why. Like I want to read books again. I miss reading. That's why I love this podcast because mm-hmm. it forces me to read books. Right. Because all I do is watch television, and I need to to get back into to books. Yeah, so, I, I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. After we're done with with all of the Pullman stuff, I I want to get into some. I want us to do other books. Oh, I would love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would totally love to do that. Okay, maybe we can do the expanse. That would be fun. Oh, people couldn't see that I was making a face. <laughs> it was just quiet, but I was making a face of like, <gasps> okay. yeah, it wasn't just her, like just ignoring me, <laughs> me, as is my lot in life. Well, All right. I think we did pretty well. We did. I missed Alaric, but I think we went. I yeah. think we did. A, I think we had a pretty good one. We did him proud. I um, hope so. I will uh, see what I can do about getting this out um, as soon as possible. And um, thanks everybody for watching, listening, and participating in the show. Watch, uh, go follow us on Twitter at the Amber Spycast. Go find our YouTube channel and like, subscribe, and click the bell so you can be notified when new stuff comes out. We have Instagram. We have Facebook. Yes. So we're literally everywhere. We are all over the place. Exactly. You Alaric, should of us. have a Dole Whip for me. Yes. I've never had one, but I hear they're great. They're the best. Oh. I hope we have Next one for me. Down, we're going we're gonna to get one. All right. See you, everybody. See you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.